everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about an interesting sort of topic of conversation that comes up every now and again with patients that we speak to, and that's the concept of a dead arm. So the idea or the scenario that most people would sort of experience this, uh, you're asleep, uh, potentially on your front or on your side with your arm up, and you, sort of your head resting on your forearm, and then you wake up and you've lost all feeling and all control of that arm, and essentially it's just limp sort of an area. It can be a little bit disconcerting if you um, haven't had it before or if you're a little bit worried if it's something sinister. And what we tend to do is we tend to move ourselves around or try and move that around and fling that around until we can get some, some circulation back into the area, get some life back into it and things return to normal. So it's not necessarily a sinister thing that's going on here, but one of the things that I wanted to draw your attention to is it may not necessarily be, or it's unlikely to be, the circulation-based issue that we tend to think it is. Uh, and that idea is perpetuated a lot. Um, I think a lot of people, if you polled a lot of people and asked them what they thought a dead arm was, I think the majority of people, potentially the overwhelming majority of people, would expect that to be a problem with your circulation or a short-term problem with your circulation that comes back once you wake up and get yourself out of that position and move yourself around again. Now, what I want to draw you guys' attention to is if it is a circulation issue, then if it happens over night time and you wake up and turn the light on, you should expect to see a difference in the color of the sides. So if it's your hand that's gone numb or your arm that's gone numb, potentially you would expect it to be less red and more of a whitish color um, because the blood, if there's less blood there, then you won't have that appearance of a red sort of healthy tissue. It'll be sort of more white. And we said that a lot if you were to um, sort of cut off the the circulation to an area, you know, short term with a rubber band or something, um, that blood flow tends to be a little bit less. Now there can be, if you've sort of trapped some blood in the area, it might look a lot more purple, um, but if there's less blood flow or it's ischemic, we probably expect it to be a little bit whiter. It doesn't have the reddening of that blood, um, particularly sort of close to the surface. So what we tend to find instead, and it's not to say that there isn't some circulatory based issues for some people, but uh, one of the things that we, we know we can change with this is it actually tends to be, or a majority of these types of issues tend to be nerve related, where that dead arm feeling, that lack of sensation followed by that slow sort of return of that soft tingling or that really harsh tingling that you can get when it comes back again, it tends to speak more of a neural issue. Again, a short term one, doesn't have to be anything sinister. And what we expect to find if we assessed you is we'd expect to find there to be some local dysfunction at the base of your neck or the top of your upper back that you put into a position and exposed and it hasn't enjoyed that. So what we tend to find with our patients who sort of have consistent dead arms, sure you can try and force yourself out of, out of a position that you would gravitate to without thinking about it. It's an unconscious position that you get into. You can try best to get out of that position but as we talk about a lot on this channel, we want to have a deeper conversation about what the root cause of this is. Because if you want to sleep in this position, this is a, a normal expression of shoulder flexion and you know, maybe a little bit of a neck lateral flexion or some flexion, whatever it is. You're allowed to put yourself in positions. Uh, positions are normal. But if a certain position gives you a symptom, then what's more likely happening here is that position is exposing something underlying that you had no reason to consider or to even know about prior to that happening. And it's also a positive where you can learn something about yourself and say, right, well, this position is doing something to me that I don't like. If I find the root cause and change that, then I should be able to enjoy that position again without any negative consequences. So the interesting thing about a dead arm from sleeping is again, if you accrue some overloaded sort of neck tissue, the joints get a bit stiff, the muscles get a bit tight, the upper back gets a bit stiff, the ribs get a bit stiff in that area where the nerves come from that supply the arm. That generally happens during the day. So the sneaky thing about this is if you wake up with a dead arm throughout the night, you actually want to think back to the positions and the shapes and the things that you were doing with that base of your neck and upper back leading up to the point of when you went to bed. So for a lot of people, it comes back to just simple, simple neck postures. It can be using a computer. You know, driving a car, um, it can be something as simple as you're just sitting down watching TV in a bad position, uh, whatever it may be. There's generally a legacy that you take to bed that sleeping in that position exposes. So one of the things you can do is if you wake up first thing, uh, sorry, in the middle of the night and you feel like you've got a bit of a dead arm, if you can free up your neck, you might find that that quickly allows things to, to settle back down again. 
I know for me personally, when I used to get um, a dead arm every now and again, if I could free my neck up and actually crack my neck, um, which again, we don't necessarily think is a long-term solution, it's just a short-term strategy, but as soon as that freed up, the sensation and the feeling would come back into the arm. So what it speaks to is making sure that the health of your neck, the health of your upper back is good, and the positions that you put that tissue in are also good, so that when you go to bed, you're not exposing anything you don't have to, you don't have to have that problem. Because again, there always has to be a reason for it. You should be allowed to be in a position because positions are normal, um, provided that it's not a, I guess, a detrimental shape. So obviously the position of sleeping here, you're relaxed, you're asleep, you're relatively well supported, is a different conversation to a slouchy position because this is against gravity. There's always tension through these areas that your body has to compensate with. If you're well supported in a bit of a dodgy shape, um, there'd be less dysfunction there. It wouldn't necessarily rule out dysfunction, but you would have less dysfunction because the reaction to that position is stiffening and tightening. So as we've done a lot before on the channel, one of the things you can do to test this out for yourself, so if you're someone who gets a, a dead arm when you're sleeping consistently, or you've had one and you wanna make sure it doesn't come back again, again, we've done this a lot, but a, a ball like a lacrosse ball like this or a tennis ball are a fantastic way to get at the neck joints upper back joints, free them up and feed some slack back into that function to make sure that the nerves aren't getting annoyed or compressed, uh, albeit in a short term, non-sinister fashion when you're sleeping. So again, how we do this is again, round the back, but just I'll show you through the front to begin with. You wanna place the ball right in the middle where the spine is. So pretty much at the base of the neck, then you want the ball to roll out a little bit and you'll need to turn your head to that side a little bit just to make sure that you're finding a spot that feels stiff and you wanna stay there until it frees up. So Again, you can do this lying down. For the purposes of this, I'll do it up against the wall like I've done before. So I'm right in the middle here. I've just rolled the ball off to the side a little bit and I've had to turn my body a little bit more. Otherwise, if I just go across to the side, it can potentially roll out relatively easily. So leaning back into it on the middle, just off to one side, slowly moving the ball around until I feel like I hit something that feels a little bit stiff and tight. Then just staying here until it starts to free up. And then same thing, you want to move the ball down a fraction or up a fraction, depending on where you feel uh, your stiffness is. And you want to systematically work down from about the, uh, the mid shoulder blade level up to the sort of mid neck. You just systematically look for any stiff and tight spots there. If you're lucky, you may hit a spot that sort of sends a little bit of tingling down your arm. If that's where you um, sort of feel your arm goes numb or if that's sort of where the sensation returns too quickly when your dead arm sort of recovers, then it might suggest you're on the spot that's the most connected to your symptoms. So um, again, the really interesting thing about this exercise is that we're looking for stiffness. So if you feel like you're on, if your right arm is the one, so my right arm here is the one that goes numb or when you're sleeping, if you're in that position, it doesn't guarantee that your stiffness is gonna be on the right hand side of your neck. It could actually be on the other side. So don't miss it. Just make sure that you're spending some time looking down one side, compare that to how stiff and immobile or thick those tissues feel on the other side. Again, we're not necessarily looking for pain because you don't have neck pain or arm pain. We're just looking for mechanical um, dysfunction or a mechanical breakdown in the normal order of things. So for me, if I was to, uh, to sleep here and lie in this position and my arm went dead, I'd actually find that my, my left hand side feels the stiffer side. So I'd want to free this up to feed some slack to that side and allow it to settle because we know that your body doesn't necessarily care as much about left and rights as we do. If you have some dysfunction on say the right hand side here, it does pull slack from everywhere, from below, from above and from the other side. So if you have some dysfunction here, you can certainly treat these areas, but unless you're looking for that dysfunction around it, then it's very hard to restore normal motion, normal function to that area. So, so I think it's a really interesting topic of conversation to have in that if you do get a dead arm at the night time, just be aware that it may not necessarily be the circulation based issue that we tend to think it is. It might actually be more nerve related, which comes back to some stiffness and some tightness in your neck and upper back, which again is also related to your postures and all that sort of boring, unsexy stuff. So, uh, so hopefully that was a useful, uh, interesting thing to talk about. Uh, if you did find it useful, please consider leaving a like below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It really helps this content get out to more people, which is obviously the purpose of it. We want these inf uh, this information, these ideas that we talk every day with our patients um, to find their way to people that need it. 
uh, particularly because a lot of it is probably different to the traditional physical therapy slash physiotherapy information that's out there at the moment. But this sort of stuff is just based on things that we find work and the connections that we're finding day to day trying to solve people's problems. So, so if that resonates with you guys, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, and also let me know in the comments how you're going. If you're someone who consistently has a dead arm or other sort of arm related symptoms, let me know in the comments and we can have a chat about sort of what it might be, where you can go with it and what you can talk to your therapist about um, to help you get the results that you're after. So, um, so again, thanks for watching. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you soon.